Um, I'm delighted to be speaking to you today uh, on the solstice and also following on from my sister's amazing talk that hopefully has got you thinking about your connection to the ocean. And what I want to talk to you about is how you can actually give back to the ocean and in fact, pretty much the environment in which you live in. So first of all, I just want to give you um, a small flavor of who I am. Kind of basically, I'm, I'm highly involved in, in the coastal environment um, through my work and through my life and through living. And I just want to give you a second to maybe just take a deep breath and picture the environment that you interact with every day because quite a lot of what I'm going to talk about will also feed in to what you are, what environment you have and how you can help protect it better. Um, now that we've gotten over all that, uh, let's get really stuck in. And I'm going to tell you some of the facts um, around marine litter at the moment, which is kind of one of the biggest things that our environment is facing. So the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is sitting in the ocean like a plastic soup, is now three times the size of France. Um, recently, speaking about the unprecedented levels of whales and dolphins washing up on Irish shores, Simon, Dr. Simon Burrow talked about the fact that 10% of them are being found with plastics and all of them with traces of microplastics. And indeed, this has been reflected all around the world with different whales and dolphins washing up in different areas, dead or in great agony over the fact that they've ingested these plastics or perhaps are entangled about in them. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I find that these big facts are very important for us to get a really good picture of what is happening out there, but also can make us feel like very small and that any impact that we do surely isn't going to be big enough to create real change. And I've learned through my life and through my work that this, this isn't just so. And in fact, there's loads of things that we can do. So I really want to drive home the fact that individual uh, empowerment and taking that step towards tackling these issues has great impact. So first of all, we can look at the single-use plastics in our lives. We've all used a straw, bottle, maybe a takeaway coffee cup. They all have plastics in them. And imagine now some great alternatives that we can bring with us. Um, both me and my sister are rocking our um, metal water bottles today. But there's also great alternatives and great ingenuity coming out in things like straws. So now we have metal straws, we have glass straws, we have paper straws. We even have pasta straws, um, which are actually quite effective. And not only that, but there's great power in taking a few minutes to actually clean up after ourselves and clean up our environment. And a great way to do this in a really sustainable way for absolutely everybody is spending two minutes at it. And the two minute beach clean is all about that kind of idea. And you know, you might not pick up this massive amount of rubbish that Eski's picked up in two minutes in the photograph, but even that small amount of rubbish that I've picked up in my hand is so important because those are tiny fragments of plastic that might never have be, never again be seen on our shores and have the possibility of being removed, but also are the perfect size and colors that uh, our marine life are going to eat. And indeed, we can apply this two-minute clean to pretty much anywhere in the world. You can do a two-minute street clean, two-minute river clean, two-minute park clean, all of it, and all of it is sustainable on a daily basis. And that's what's really important, that we make changes that we bring into our daily lives. And indeed, we can maybe look at the plastics maybe that we already have in our lives and how we can give them new life and reuse them, like these amazing sculptures from um, Von Krana Festival that really highlight the kind of litter that's washing up on our shores. Now, you've got thinking about maybe some actions that you might be able to take in your life. How can this have a global impact? Well, we're gonna move up through it here. And the University of Pennsylvania had some really amazing research come out recently that looked at the fact that the tipping point for real, large-scale social change is 25%. So if 25% of us even here today take home with us around the world these ideas um, of creating a better environment for ourselves, it's amazing what we can accomplish. Through my own experience, it has led to groups, community groups, going out and cleaning their local beach and creating a cleaner environment for them to enjoy and also for visitors. So there's always that economic thing, especially for Ireland being an island. 
It's also led to great ingenuity, because suddenly these people who maybe don't connect in their uh, local communities are getting together, they have this thing in common, and are now starting to do things about it. They're starting to have conversations about it, and they're starting to come up with creative ways of solu solutions um, to these issues. So the bottom center photograph is of Dunfanaghy Tidy Towns, and they have an amazing beach cleaning system in place that turned a beach that was a complete and utter litter black spot into a beach that's now so clean, I couldn't find one piece of litter for my two minute beach clean. And not only this, but you'll actually see movements that happen beyond this. And Falcara Clean Coast Group are a great example of this because they now are taking their beach cleaning activities, which is what they started with, and are now going, our coastal environment, our dune systems getting really battered by different storms with climate change and everything else coming in. We really need to help protect it. It's our coastal defense and let's do something about it. And suddenly there's other kind of projects cropping up from just this picking up of litter. Also, um, what happened for me was I uh, met Anne at a conference last year talking about litter, and as a fellow Coastie, um, she really understood kind of how important it is that we protect the environment which we work and live and enjoy. And that has led me to standing here today, so you never know <laughs> where this journey might take you and who you meet along the way. It's amazing. So let's now give it a bit of a kind of bigger context again. Um, nationally, I work on the Clean Coast Program, which works in protecting Ireland's waterways, beaches, seas, and marine life. We do this through several different initiatives, but some of those community groups that I just talked about that I work with in Donegal are part of a network of 600. So suddenly, that few bags of rubbish they've picked up on a Saturday morning is being reflected all around the coast of Ireland. And now we're lifting huge amounts of rubbish. And it's really important for them to feel that they're not alone. They're actually part of this massive community of people. And I now have an internet or a national voice through what we're doing. And then there's campaigns and stuff that we do as well about trying to remove litter before it becomes marine litter through our Think Before You Flush and Beat the Microbeat campaigns, which I do urge you to take the time to perhaps look up because they also, again, are issues and talk about issues that go around the world. And in particular, the Beat the Microbead actually is just involves downloading a simple app and having a look at what products you're buying. So now let's go international. So you've made that leap and maybe you're taking part in a two minute beach clean or you bring your keep cup with you when you go to the coffee shop. And what's amazing is what's happening is, is that things like the two minute beach clean, which really has developed into a two minute wherever clean, is now happening all around the world. It started off in the UK under Martin Dory and is now happening in Japan, Iran, Australia, America, here in the UK and Ireland. So suddenly you're feeding into this global community, which is such a, a kind of important thing that's come from all the technology that we have. We can also become citizen scientists and feed into apps like Literati, which basically allows you to geotag and use a few hashtags to categorize litter that you're finding perhaps in your street or in a nearby area or a beautiful uh, natural environment that you visit. And this is of Belfast city center location. And all of these red dots have a photograph attached to them of exactly what kind of litter is being um, is is there or has been picked up, and this can feed into town councils and city councils and neighbourhoods and communities all making moves towards a better environment because they can see plastic straws are a problem in my area, or plastic cutlery, uh, or any of these kind of different things. And in fact, schools have utilised it as well. And let's not forget how impactful and powerful it is to simply cut down the single-use plastics in our lives. So this has had a knock-on effect to many coffee shops around Dublin have now adopted um, a discount for their uh, customers who come with their keep cup because they're saving money not having to buy these disposable cups and they're also getting to help protect the environment at the same time. There's now supermarkets and shops that are adopting it as well to kind of cut back um, on the single-use plastics. So you have single or plastic-free aisles and things like this to enjoy too. So the knock-on effect of our individual action can actually be quite unreal. So I hope I've given you some ideas of what you could maybe adopt into your life 
and help protect the natural environment which you enjoy on a regular basis. And if you do any kind of posting from this talk, I'd love it if you could tag us at Clean Coast. So thanks so much for your time. Mm -hmm.